Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Let's talk about Liberty Safe, and if you haven't been following this controversy, here's what happened. So the FBI got a search warrant to raid a property, and while there, they encountered a safe. They contacted the manufacturer of that safe, Liberty Safe, and said, we have a warrant, here's a copy, and Liberty Safe provided them with a secret code that allowed the FBI to open the safe without having to drill it, cut it, anything like that. They just enter in this secret manufacturer code and it pops right open. Now, Liberty Safe makes gun safes as well as other products and they're quite popular, but there's a lot of issues with this and there's a lot of people who are very upset. So let's talk about it. Now, first, I'll just note that one reason that a lot of people are very interested in this one is that this person was facing charges related to January 6th. And I don't care about that, at least not for the purposes of this video, because everything I'm going to say just applies generally. It doesn't matter who this person is in this context. We're just going to talk about the legal questions and some of the practical implications for gun owners. So first, the legal questions. And I'll note that Liberty Safe has put out a, um, a statement on this. Now, one thing people have said is, can Liberty Safe do this? Well, yeah, I don't think that they've done anything illegal. However, um, there are some questions about whether they had to do what they were doing. And Liberty Safe has used some weasel words that have caused a lot of people to be confused. So let's read the statement together because I'm going to say what they say, what they're hinting at, and what actually is going on. <clears throat> so it says, on August 30th, 2023, Liberty Safe was contacted by the FBI requesting the access code to the safe of an individual for whom they had a warrant to search their property. Our company protocol is to provide access codes to law enforcement if a warrant grants them access to a property. After receiving the request, we received proof of the valid warrant and only then did we provide them with an access code. Liberty Safe had no knowledge of any of the details surrounding the investigation at the time. So they're saying that just because some people have said that this is political, they're saying, oh, we don't care about the politics of this person. We do this to any of our customers. Yay. So Liberty Safe is devoted to protecting the personal property and Second Amendment rights of our customers and has repeatedly denied requests for access codes without a warrant in the past. We do not give out combinations without proper legal documentation being provided by authorities. We regularly update our policies to ensure both compliance with federal and state law and reasonable consumer privacy protections within the law. First and foremost, Liberty Safe is committed to protect our preserving our customers' rights and we will remain unwavering in those values. So that's what they say. And what they're hinting is that they were required to cooperate because of this warrant. And in fact, that has resulted in some headlines by people who've been suckered. For example, Newsweek says uh, their headline on this is MAGA calls for boycott after gun safe company complies with FBI warrant. And it the first line is, after complying with an FBI warrant and providing access to a safe, popular gun safe manufacturer Liberty Safe faced backlash from conservatives. Well, really they should be facing backlash from anybody who likes secure products because this is a security problem. But after complying with the warrant, that sounds like Liberty Safe was compelled in some way to do this. And that's not the case. If the FBI gets a warrant to search my neighbor's property, I'm not required to go over there and help. Um, if they come over and say, hey, can I, can we borrow your crowbar? We forgot to bring one and we need to get in. I can say, no, you can't. This is my crowbar. Go buy your own. Uh, even if I have a key to their house, like if they've left me a key for in case of emergencies, um, I can just sit there and say, nope. In fact, I can be sitting there with that key in my hand and they ask for it and I say, nope, um, not allowed. Normally a warrant doesn't compel you to help anyone else, especially not a third party who's uninvolved. Liberty Safe is not alleged to be part of those charges, at least not so far as I've heard. So it would be very odd for them to be compelled in this sense, absent some specific court order. And Liberty Safe doesn't actually say that they're compelled here. 
What they say is that their policy is if there's a warrant to search the property, then they'll give the codes, which they're not required to do. They're just being overly helpful to the police at the expense of their customers. And there are some serious implications to this. I have said before in videos that for gun owners, one reason to buy a safe is that ultimately it provides some protection even, you know, in the event of a police raid. And this isn't protection like in the sense of the police aren't going to get your guns. Because if the police are raiding and they want to take your guns or search for them, um, it's gonna happen because they have time. They can bring in somebody with a drill. They can bring in somebody with an angle grinder. Um, heck, they could get the low man on the totem pole, the new recruit, and give him a needle file and tell him, go to work, get through there eventually. They have all the time in the world. They have all the manpower in the world. They are going to be able to get through any safe that you can buy. Um, most safes are not rated for... Um, to last all that long. It's actually that they're intended to slow people down and make it difficult, but any safe can be breached. So why does it matter then if law enforcement are raiding your house that you have a safe? Well, one thing that often comes up is whether or not that search of the safe was lawful. And one argument that gets made in court is, listen, this person consented to the search. And the best counter argument to that consent search argument is to be able to point to the safe and how it's been sawed open or drilled open or blown open with explosives, whatever it is they do, and say, that doesn't look like consent to me. That looks like they had to break into it. Here, we've got a problem because if they're using some secret access code, how do you, you know, you don't get that same benefit of being able to point to the destroyed safe. And I don't know how these access codes work. They've said, okay, we were able to provide a code. Well, is it one code for all Liberty safes? That would be sort of the worst case scenario. Um, is it one code for each model of safe? In which case, once the FBI has that code, do you think they're going to delete it? Or do you think they're just going to have it on hand for the next time they encounter a safe like that? I would certainly save a code like that if it came into my possession. So I assume the FBI is at least as clever as me. That might not be a fair assumption, but I'm going to make it anyway. It might also be a code that is somehow processed with the serial number of the safe, such that you get some sort of salted thing so that each thing has its own um, unique code, but a code that can be derived from having that serial number. Well, still, in that case, that having that code helps them start doing math to figure that out. And that's a problem, because that means that there's plenty of circumstances in which Liberty Safe would not give the code, where they've said, we won't give the code if they don't have a warrant, but where that code might still be out there. And the police might be able to investigate when they shouldn't and might be able to say, well, how did we get in this safe if this person didn't cooperate and didn't consent to the search? It's going to be very difficult if the police are saying you consented to the search and you're saying, no, I didn't, to explain how they got into your safe without, you know, having to hammer it open or wrench it open or anything like that. Um, we can't always assume that the police are going to be well behaved because there's tons and tons of circumstances and tons and tons of examples of them not being well behaved. So I really like a safe for the reason of being, um, even if you can't keep anybody out, you can at least make it obvious that they had to go in against your wishes. And that's gone with this. Second problem is. If there's a, a master code, this master code is going to be very valuable for wrongdoers, both wrongdoers in a police force, but also just criminals. And there is no way to ensure that this code does not end up leaking at some point. It is in fact virtually guaranteed that it will leak at some point. Um, whether it's a police officer who's been provided it and 
passes it along. Uh, I understand that Liberty Safe may also provide these to locksmiths, and nothing prevents a locksmith from deciding to sell that on the side, being overly talkative with somebody else, um, developing a meth habit. All of these things can happen. And once that code leaks, well, there is no way for you to change it. So you now have a very expensive, very heavy thing that has very poor security. And you may not know that. You might not, you might be the last person to find out that this code has been leaked. So this creates a further problem. Let's say you are a Canadian gun owner, which means you have requirements to keep your guns locked up. And let's say your house is broken into and the police show up, they do an investigation. You say, all of my guns are gone. And they ask, where were your guns? And you say, of course they were in the safe. And then the police who also haven't heard that this is leaked, walk over and they see that your gun safe is perfectly intact. There's not a scratch on it, but the guns are gone. You know what the police are going to conclude? They're going to conclude that one of two things happened. One, that you never locked the safe, or two, that you were lying about the guns being in the safe. And now you're facing criminal charges because of this problem. So the real issue here isn't uh, what some people have said. One, uh, that article I mentioned quoted somebody who said that, um, and I'm going to read this quote, but I don't think it's a smart quote. Um, this was, uh, so it says, Liberty Safe is an enemy to gun owners. They could have fought the warrant like Apple did. Instead, they buckled and bent over. Your guns are not safe with Liberty Safe Incorporated. Boycott, ridicule, ruin their company. That's from Charlie Kirk, the founder and CEO of Turning Point USA. And he's wrong about this because the question shouldn't be how much they fought the warrant. The problem fundamentally is that they were able to comply with this. Really, they should have been able to be sitting there and, you know, the FBI calls them up and says, we need an access code. We want to get in there. And they say, that's fantastic. We'd really love to help you out. Um, I see you've got a warrant. We'd, we'd love to help you out. Um, we don't have codes. We don't have some secret bypass because a secret bypass is insecure. It will eventually end up in the hands of people who shouldn't have it, which might include the FBI, but we'll, you know, we'll assume it doesn't for the sake of argument. It might end up in the hands of criminals. It just makes the safe less safe. So what they should be saying is we don't have any secret bypasses. We don't have any secret methods. If you forget the code, you've got a drill. And your guys are going to need to get a locksmith. There'll be somebody with the right drilling patterns for how to do it, but there is no non-destructive entry technique here that we know of. That would be the ideal. But now I'm just going to note these sorts of mystery, you know, codes and so forth. These secret manufacturer codes are very common in a lot of security products. And it, it's a very bad thing. Um, amongst other things, it might mean that you can talk them into giving you a code when you have no basis to ask for it. You know, hey, I'd like a code for this. It's my neighbor's gun safe, but I want a code for it. Now, Liberty Safe says they combat that by not giving the codes out to gun safe owners. Which means if you are the owner of the safe and you have locked yourself out, they won't give you the code they'll let you hire a locksmith and they'll give the locksmith the code. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people on Twitter who are really pissed off because they're like, wait, I locked myself out and I had to spend hundreds of dollars to get into my safe. And you guys had the code the whole time. What the heck? So this is concerning and more concerning as well is the fact that a lot of people appear to be surprised by this, meaning that I don't, it doesn't look like Liberty Safe disclosed that there was this intentional vulnerability with their products. 
So yeah, I don't recommend uh, Liberty Safe, and there are some other safe manufacturers in the meantime who have put out statements uh, saying, "Listen, um, we don't we don't do the same thing. We instead uh, keep our product secure." I'm not going to recommend uh, specifically a gun safe company, but um, when you're looking at buying a gun safe, this might be a worthwhile question: is just to say, "Hey." Are there secret bypass codes? Because if there are, maybe buy something else, regardless of the politics. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this has been interesting and educational. Um, I know this one is politically fraught, but I don't think that the politics in this one matter a huge amount. I think that the, the issues here are the same, whether it's, you know, a January 6th or... Hunter Biden with his gun charges or, you know, a random hunter to whoever. All of these issues are just problems with the idea of having secret backdoors. And every once in a while, somebody floats the notion that there should be secret backdoors required in encryption and various other places. It's a terrible idea. So thank you for watching. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level. Lembus for the Elf, the CCFR, Canada's National Firearms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Here's a Coin Legal Witcher, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who are in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. Hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.